I have just a quick little olive branch tutorial prepared for you today. I am going to be using some Arches watercolor paper and my Princeton Velvet Touch round size four brush. And I'm going to start off by doing the branch of the olive branch and I'm mixing together some sepia with a little bit of my quinacridone rose. I just want this to be kind of like a red brown color. And I'm just mixing that up. And I'm just going to do the, the main part of the branch. I'm starting out with a little bit of a thicker branch end and then very thin lines going up. And you can kind of just uh, go in any directions you want. You can add tiny little branches going off to the side. I'm just doing kind of a forked branch. And then I'm going to add in some random, very thin little branch segments coming off of the main branch. Uh, really only about a quarter to a half an inch in length, very, very small where I can have some leaves coming off of that or maybe some of my olives. So just very, very light touch with that. Um, if you are more comfortable using a smaller brush to make thin lines, you certainly could try just using a size one or a detailer brush if you have trouble um, with that really light pressure making very thin lines. So next I am going to put in some of my olives. And the olives I wanna do are black olives, but I don't wanna do straight black. So I'm mixing my ivory black with some carbazole violet so that I get kind of um, a really deep purple black color. So just mixing up a bunch of that. And I'm still using my round size four for this entire piece. And I'm going to make some oval shapes and I want to leave a small little area for a highlight on them. So as I make those oval shapes here, I'm going to just leave a little white space for a little uh, light highlight on that. And I'm just gonna pick some random places near the branch to put those. And then I'll add some little connecting stems to them as I go after this is dry. So some of these I might add um, two together in little clumps. And then after I've done some of the leaves, I may add another olive just coming tucked out from behind a leaf. Here I'm just putting two olives together. And just take your time with this. I mean, this part is a little bit slow. The leaves will go a little bit quicker. Just take your time and make some nice little oval shapes with a small little highlight in them. And when you make your highlights on fruit like this, you want to pick a point of where your light is going to come from. I've chosen that top left corner of my page is gonna be where my light's coming from. So that's where my light reflection will be is on the top left side of all of my olives. So anytime you do berries or any small little fruit that you're going to have that little light highlight, that's just a good rule of thumb is pick a point for your light and then have all of your highlights come in that same spot on all of your fruits or berries or whatever it is that you're painting. And I don't want to overload this with too many. I'm just kind of spotting in a few here and there. And then I'll start working on the leaves here in just a minute. So for the leaves, I'm doing um, a mix of undersea green, and then I'm adding in some yellow ochre. And I'll kind of just go between those two greens. I'm just mixing a little bit of that undersea green with that yellow, just to give myself a really nice olive green. And then I'll use some of the undersea green just by itself. So just kind of switching back and forth so I get some variation in my greens. We're gonna do some long, thin leaves. So just take your time to do a nice long stroke start out with little pressure and then apply more pressure as you get further down the leaf and then lift your brush to get that nice point. So this is something if you wanted to practice on a separate sheet just making the leaf shapes that is a good idea. Uh, I This is actually my second branch that I did. I did another one before this just as a practice just to kind of get a layout idea of how I wanted and you can also arrange these branches into a wreath would be very pretty, or you can make a frame around a monogram. Uh, you could frame out a card. Lots of different ways that you can use these olive branches to make things. 
I'm just kind of going back and forth between my undersea green and my yellow ochre green mixture, just so I get a lot of variation in my leaf colors. And if you want to leave a small little white area in your leaf, you can leave that little gap. I did on a couple of the leaves here, or you could just have them all filled in solid or do a combination of both. It's kind of, I have a couple that I've left and then a couple that I, most of them I've just filled in all the way. And you can vary the size on these. You could put some smaller leaves here and there. I'm gonna just fill in a lot of my main leaves. And then I can also do some leaves that are coming out from behind other leaves. So they'll be going different directions. Not all the leaves are going to be falling the same direction. You'll have them going outward from the branch. So here I'm putting a leaf behind that and did bleed a little bit into the other leaf. So I'm just gonna go over that first leaf just to um, smooth that color out. But you can still see that I've got two defined leaves there. And then anywhere that I painted a small little branch coming off of the main branch, I wanna make sure I put a leaf on the end of that. And then you can just tuck in some smaller leaves in between others, just to fill in any of the empty space. Um, but I'm still leaving gaps in between the branches. Here, I'm going to do a leaf that goes behind one of the olives. So I'm just going around very carefully. Um, best to wait until your olives are all the way dry or just be extremely careful when you go right up to the edge of that olive paint or you will have that black bleed into your green. I'll do another leaf that's kind of going behind another one here. I'm just going up to the edge and then I'm trying to Imagine the leaf going all the way behind and at what point would that leaf come out from behind the other leaf? And if you need to just go over your other leaf again, if you have any um, overspill of your paint, especially on a smaller scale like this, it's a little harder to uh, have that brush control. So it's good practice to do that and uh, getting your brush right up to the edge of another object uh, that you're filling in. So here I'm just putting a few small little leaves in just to fill in some of the areas and I'll go down my branch a bit and just add some more leaves. So not all of these leaves have to come off a little branch end. A lot of them will just come directly off the big branch or the main trunk of the branch, I guess is what you'd say. I just want to fill in some random little spots and try to vary the direction of my leaves, have some that are coming out from behind or in front. I'm also just using this as a practice here. I did um, make a little frame for a friend of mine that wanted it as a Father's Day gift. So that was where I got the idea to paint these olive branches. She wanted something that wasn't necessarily florals, but a little more masculine. And I thought branches and foliage was a really good idea. So if you have a chef in your family, I think that olive branches would be a really great painting subject to do for a gift. You could turn it into a card or do a finished piece. Maybe uh, make something uh, with some brush lettering that would be kitchen themed or cooking themed. That would be fun. And as you can see here, I have this one going behind the tip of that other leaf. I'm just trying to do varying shades of green and that yellow green, olive green I created with that undersea green and yellow ochre mixture. So now I've gone back to that branch color I mixed, which was the sepia and the rose. And I'm just gonna add some little connecting little stems from the olives to the branch. So very, very light touch, uh, very, very thin lines that I'm making. And if that leaf wasn't quite dry all the way, so I did have a little bit of bleeding. I had a little bit too much paint on my brush. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that paint back out, fix my little mistake I made. I'm just going to go back over a little bit of my branch. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker. 
I'm just going over that with my sepia and rose mixture. I'm going to add another little olive just kind of poking out from behind one of the leaves up here. So I'm just going right up to the edge of that leaf and just making uh, almost like a semicircle shape coming out, just taking a look, thinking of where else I could add one, but I don't want to overwhelm the painting with too many olives. So just adding that little stem. And if you see any other areas that you feel you might want to add more olives or some smaller leaves in there, any place that has a very uh, gaping area, a hole in your painting, you could add some more leaves or olives to fill in areas. But I'm going to call that done. And just thank you for watching my video. And please uh, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any upcoming tutorials that I'll be adding.